<laughs> I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And it's Friday morning, time for the devotion. Yep. We are glad you're here and we are here to encourage you through the word so that you can be strong in the faith. And live victoriously in Christ. And we are continuing with our origin story of Samuel, a great, great judge during the time of Israel. Samuel anointed Saul, the first king of Israel, to be king. Samuel anointed David to be king over Israel, who slew Goliath. Samuel was one of the greats mm -hmm. that we have in scripture. Yes. And this is his origin story. Here we go. We are going to pick up in 1 Samuel. Uh, let's see. I guess 20? Mm -hmm. But we, let's open in a word of prayer first. Yes, that sounds good. Go ahead. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your word, God Almighty. I thank you that we can be so blessed to be able to open your word, freely speak your word without any fear, O oh Lord, of someone coming in and shutting us down. Father, we thank, thank you, you for this great country of America, Lord. May we always stand by Israel, Father. Yes. Let your peace be in Jerusalem, Lord. May our nation always stand by her side, Father. Lord, we have so much that we have received from the Jewish people. Lord, I, I thank you. I just I thank you for your word, for your faithfulness to them, because that is a, a testimony to us, to your faithfulness to us. Father, so as we get into your word, Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach us, prepare our hearts to receive. Give us understanding of what you want to say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And the jets are flying over, and the trash man came through. At least he's this already my passed. cup of coffee? Hey, we can share it. <laughs> Was this my cup of coffee? No. No, okay. We had a bigger one, but we can share that one. Hmm. Yeah. Yours tasted better. She can have it. <laughs> We're in verse number 20. <laughs> Wherefore it came to pass, and, and meaning it came to pass. What that, Hannah uh, had prayed for. Hannah had prayed for, and Hannah had... Uh, had the child so she conceived and this is where we're picking up where her prayer was being answered and it says wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel saying because I have asked him of the Lord it's an answer to prayer yep and now in 21 it starts, it says, Now the man Ephna and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. Remember last time he had done this, Hannah was with him and she was grieved in spirit. She had prayed to the Lord just between her and God. She had mis been misjudged by the, the priest, Eli, thought that she was drunken and she said to him, No, this is, you know, from my heart, this is, I'm, I'm grieving, I'm talking to the Lord. Um, and he blesses her because he had misjudged her and said, whatever you've just asked of the Lord, may he give it to you. It'll be done. And here is the result of that. So it says, now the man Elkanah and all his wife went to uh, his house, went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah did not go up. She's staying home. For she said to her husband, not until the child is weaned, then I will take him that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. When she had prayed and asked the Lord for a son, she had made a promise to God that she would give him to, her, to the Lord. Um, and she knew what that meant. She knew that the day that she took him to the temple, that child was going to stay there. Yeah. That was her promise to God. She was gonna give him back to the Lord you know a lot of times in our life I think we when we're in a hard situation we'll make a promise oh Lord oh, I promise I'll God give you get this, me out of this and I'll serve you or I'll you know I'll I, I'll do this thing give you this thing and then things get well and go good and we forget about those promises mm -hmm. and we don't keep up our word we're here we have Hannah Hannah made a promise. God yes. blessed her with a son that she had wanted all her life. 
but she had also told the Lord that she would give him to him. So here she is weeding him, taking care of him while she can. She's nursing him. And this is his mom, her child. So this is where we're at right now. Verse 23, And Elkanah her husband said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. Tarry until thou hast weaned him. Only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullock and one eveth of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. The things that she brought was the normal offerings that are taken to the temple. You, you brought them to redeem uh, your, your son from the Lord, but she brought him up even though she was bringing her son uh, to, to the place and she was going to leave him there. Like she was going to bring him and bring him into the priesthood or bring him to the, the place and drop him off so that he could be raised like in a, in a monastery, if we, to, to use that word, so that he could be raised in service to God. Yeah. She was dropping her son off. She said, Lord, give me a son and I'll give him to you in service to you. And so Samuel was brought in, a, in at the early life to that priest, Eli. And, and it goes on in 26. Do you want me to continue yep. in 26? And 26 says, and she said, Oh my Lord, as you, this is now she said, and they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, Oh my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. She was sure that he remembered that day, that incident that had happened. Um, remember me? I'm the one that you said was drunk and you blessed me. Well, here's what she says. For this child I prayed. And the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore, I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. You know, he shall be in the service of the Lord. So they worshipped the Lord there. <sighs> giving, giving up something that is dear to you, to give it to the Lord has its rewards it was like a vow and sometimes people make vows and then they don't keep vows mm -hmm. when you uh, make a vow to the Lord the scripture says that if you don't keep your vow it's better you were never born it's it, I mean there's some pretty tough things think hard before you make a vow before you make a promise to the Lord the Lord grants your prayers and this is it. If, if we know that what we're asking for is the will of the Lord, the scripture says we can have this confidence that not only does he hear us, but that he will grant the petition that we're asking for. So the question for today is, how do you know that what you're asking for is the will of the Lord? Good question. Well, the answer is found here because this book that we have is divided into two parts the Old Testament, Old Testament and the New Testament and the word Testament means will or covenant if you want to know what God's will is it's found here does what you're asking for line up with this scripture she wanted a child she made a commitment to the Lord she dropped that child off to the house of the Lord to be raised by Eli. Now, as we dig further on into this story, we'll find Eli had some issues. So when you make a vow to the Lord to give something to the Lord, it's not always the responsibility of who you're giving it to. You should give responsibly, but there is a responsibility just to fulfill the things that you said you were going to do if you've given your heart to Jesus then give your heart to Jesus 
If you've given your life to Jesus, then give your life to Jesus. If you've made a promise to God, I'll serve you if you get me out of this mess, then serve God. If you made a promise for giving financially or time-wise to a church, if God would get you out of a mess, then fulfill your obligation. Yes. Now, God tomorrow. is a merciful and a loving and kind God. Yeah. And tomorrow we'll continue to find out what happens. Tomorrow we'll find out exactly what happens. But I want to end with Psalms 145. Go ahead. It says, I will exalt you, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. It continues, finish it on your own. Let yeah. it be part of your prayer. So go to Psalms 145, 145. today. Read it. Let it bless you. I only stop halfway so that we could stay in our time. Yeah. And when you're reading it, it'll help you to keep a praise song in your heart and rejoice, and rejoice in, the in the Lord always. Lord. And again, I say rejoice. rejoice. See you tomorrow morning, Saturday at 7 a.m. John, you're not here to, to turn off our camera. So I guess that's a wrap. <laughs> oh, Randy's turning <laughs> off the camera. Happy anniversary, Matthew. Oh, yeah, it's our anniversary. Happy 30 anniversary. Years. 38 years. Love you. Love you.